Hello, this is Sarah Brosh. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do a quick video about a philosophy professor named George Yancey at Emory University. And I wanted to say that he should resign in abject shame from his position at Emory, Emory University. I do not believe that he should be allowed to work with graduate students after what he did to me. Um, so I want to make very clear that George Yancey knows me. He knows me as an anti-racism activist. He knows that I'm a lifelong human and civil rights activist. He knows that I'm a licensed attorney. He knows um, that I have dedicated my life to fighting oppression in all of its many forms, including racism. George Yancey knows um, that I would never engage in racist behavior in a million years. George Yancey knows me. He knows me. Um, he knows that I'm working on a Saving the World project at Yale. He knows me. And the reason why he knows me is because I worked with him on an explicitly anti-racism conference at Yale. We worked together. I worked very closely with him on this conference that had as one of its major themes anti-racism. And so he knows me very well. Uh, he, he knew and had every reason to know that I am the entirely innocent victim of the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale. And even if he did have any question about this whatsoever, he knows my advisors and mentors at Yale very, very well. All he would have had to do to confirm that I was the entirely innocent victim of a hate crime hoax at Yale is pick up the phone and call my advisors and mentors at Yale and speak with them, including Jason Stanley, including Jason Stanley. And it was for Jason Stanley that I had helped to organize and was a very active participant of this conference at Yale that had as one of its major themes, anti-racism. So, um, and just in case people are wondering, it was the Joyce Mitchell Cook Conference. She was the first African-American woman in the U.S. to receive a PhD in, she, in philosophy, and she received that PhD at Yale. And this was a conference to honor her. And one of the major themes of the conference was anti-racism because she did not get the opportunity be to fully exercise her philosophical gifts and her intellectual gifts and there's no doubt in my mind certainly that that was in no small part due to the fact that she was an african-american woman so that's why anti-racism was of course a major theme of this conference that was held in her honor and to honor her work and her legacy so george yancey knows me extremely extremely well I worked with him very closely on this conference. So it was shocking to me and it felt like a horrific betrayal when he turned his back on me after the Living or Not Being Well Black hate crime hoax at Yale on May 8th, 2018. And this recently, very recently, um, a few days ago, a week at most, uh, he wrote an op-ed for the New York Times in the context of the Ahmaud Arbery killing, the black man who was killed in Georgia recently. I'm sure you're all very well aware of it, of what happened. If you aren't, uh, you know, please, of course, you know, Google that information. So George Yancey recently wrote an op-ed in the New York Times, and he made reference to the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale, but he made reference to it indicating that it was not a hate crime hoax, that in fact I did engage in racism at Yale, that in fact I did, you know, perpetrate racial harassment against Lolata Siambola and Jean-Louis Renison, which of course is completely and utterly false. 
and George Yancey knew this, had every reason to know this, and if he had any question about this, then he should have contacted my advisor and mentor, Jason Stanley, who would have told him that I am the entirely innocent victim of the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale. So George Yancey wrote his disgusting op-ed in the New York Times recently. This is not the first time that he has defamed me as a genocidal villain who apparently lynches black students on Yale's campus. So that was the context in which he referred to the living or not being black hate crime hoax at Yale was in the context of talking about modern day lynchings, including the recent Ahmad Arbery killing, the recent killing of a black man. He was indicating that that was a modern day lynching. And then he was referring to the living or not being black hate crime hoax at Yale, indicating that that was also a modern day lynching. So obviously this puts my life in grave danger. I've basically been in hiding since May 8th, 2018. I've received thousands upon thousands of death threats and threats of violence since that time. I've been intermittently suicidal for since that time. I can't even tell you how many times I've almost, almost killed myself. And for George Yancey to put my life in the gravest danger to tell disgusting lies about me, a graduate student in philosophy, when he is a philosophy professor, and when I am someone with whom he has worked very closely, someone he knows well, someone he knows is entirely innocent, entirely innocent, and for him to put my life in the gravest danger for moral outrage industry profit and gain is abhorrent. It's disgusting. He should be ashamed of himself. He should resign from Emory University in abject shame. He should not be allowed to work with graduate students after what he did to me. And this is not the first time that he's put my life in grave danger. This is not the first time that he has defamed me as a genocidal villain who lynches black students on Yale's campus. And this is not the first time that he has so defamed me in the New York Times. He is evil. He is evil for doing this. This is an evil, dastardly thing to do and he should be utterly ashamed of himself, and he should resign in abject shame from his position at Emory University. The other thing that is so grotesque and disgusting about this is that at this point, at least before Abad Arbery's killing came to light, the Living While Black movement was defunct. It was more or less defunct, and the reason why is because charlatans and frauds like George Yancey had usurped it to perpetrate race and hate crime hoaxes for moral outrage, industry, profit, and gain. And now what, what George Yancey is doing, what many others are doing, what George Yancey did in the New York Times is he is exploiting Ahmaud Arbery's death. He is exploiting the killing of a black man to try to revive the defunct living while black movement so that he can make more moral outrage industry money by defaming me as a genocidal villain who lynches black students on Yale's campus, putting my life in the gravest danger, trying to drive me to suicide, trying to incite my murder so that he can make money off of my corpse and the destruction of my lifelong human and civil rights academic and legal careers. And he is exploiting a black man's killing to do this. He is exploiting a black man's death to do this. It is evil. It is abhorrent. It is racist. It is racist. He is responsible. George Yancey is responsible in no small part for the destruction of the living while black movement. George Yancey does not care about black people. If he cared about the well-being of black people in the US, then he would not push race and hate crime hoaxes to destroy the living while black movement and to get an innocent civil rights activist killed. And that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, I'm obviously extremely, extremely upset and I was feeling pretty suicidal, especially over this past weekend. I was defamed 
repeatedly in the press, repeatedly in the New York Times, and also by the Yale Daily News. They just trotted out another grossly defamatory piece about me for the end of the academic year, because why not? Why not? Just throw that in there. Throw that in there. Who cares if you get an innocent civil rights activist killed? There's moral outrage from industry money to be made. So it, it's been a rough week. It's been a rough week, but um, it makes me feel so much better to make this video and to get the truth out there. And I will never stop fighting for justice and for light and for truth. And I also want to tell Yale President Peter Salve that this is his fault. This is his fault. He did this. He did this. And all he has to do to stop the global vilification campaign against me that puts my life in the gravest danger is tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's Yale's motto, light and truth. Tell the truth, save my life and career. If you, would, if you have an iota of integrity, if you have an iota of decency, then you will tell the truth. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I love you all so much for all of your kind words and support. They mean everything to me. You are saving my life and career. And I have, will have my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. Please donate to my legal fund. Please support me so that I can sue Yale and sue the New York Times and sue Yale President Peter Salovey and sue George Yancey. Thank you so much. We will win this fight. We will restore civil liberties on college campuses and everywhere, and we will stop the moral outrage industry from getting one more innocent person killed. I love you all so much. Have a great night.